Yeah, room temperature burnt oat water just does not sound good. Hi everyone, Kate here, and today I will be making three summertime beverages from 1918. I came across this recipe one day flipping through one of the antique magazines in my collection, and I was just really curious to try them. This is definitely one of those times where I'm making it as an experiment because I want to know what the original product is like, rather than making something because I necessarily want the original. I'm not quite sure how these are going to taste, so <laughs> it's definitely more about satisfying my curiosity than, than just making a beverage. <laughs> Now these three recipes are all meant as wartime beverages, as they didn't use any ingredients that were rationed or otherwise in short supply. What they used instead? Oats. <laughs> lots and lots of oats. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> now most of these recipes originally made a gallon. I didn't want to be stuck drinking this stuff for days if it was awful. So I've downsized everything to make about one cup of liquid, which is about two portions worth. So let's just jump right into the recipes, starting I think with the mock coffee, as that takes the longest to brew. The original recipe was entitled Mock Coffee for Hot Days, and is said to be more wholesome than ordinary coffee. We'll see. Spoiler alert, this recipe is probably the worst of the bunch. For this recipe, you will need some coarsely ground oatmeal. I went with steel cut oats, but I did wonder later on if rolled oats might have been a better choice. This recipe doesn't actually give any sort of measurements, so I just went with a handful of oats and hoped for the best. <laughs> to the oats, you want to add just enough water to form them into cakes. Mine definitely wanted to crumble, but I carefully packed them into little rounds on a piece of parchment paper. Then I set them to bake in a toaster oven. This takes a long time. So while these are browning, let's start on the next recipe. This recipe is for a lemon flavored brew and is actually quite similar to another recipe given in the same magazine article for oatenade, just like lemonade, but with oats. <laughs> for this recipe, you will need a quarter of an ounce of finely ground oatmeal or oat flour and a slice of lemon. The recipe leaves the amount and the type of sweetener up to the cook so I went with honey in keeping with the wartime theme. Start by mixing the oat flour with a little cold water until it has the consistency of cream. Take a slice of lemon with the pips removed and add it to the mixture. Next, add one cup of boiling water. As 
I mentioned, this recipe doesn't really mention how much sweetener to add, it just says to do it to taste. So I added just a small spoonful of honey. You can serve immediately or let it chill and serve it refreshingly cold. Okay, so here it is. <laughs> I tried a little bit when it was warm and it was actually not bad. So let's let's try this. It does settle a bit as it's cooling. Uh, it's I stirred it before coming up here, but I don't know if you can see it's already uh, settled a bit. So let's dive right in. <laughs> I actually kind of like that. <laughs> it's actually really good. I don't know what I'd describe it as. I wouldn't call it a lemonade. It's definitely sort of... Creamy's not the, quite the right word. Oh, it's a little slimy at the bottom. Other than the bottom slime, that was quite good. It's not like a regular lemon water. The oatmeal definitely seems to thicken it quite a bit. It had sort of a, I don't know if I call it a creamy consistency, but sort of. But I'd, I'd actually drink that. I would, I would genuinely make that and enjoy that. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> now onto the cocoa. Now this is a hot chocolate substitute that uses the oats instead of any form of dairy. Yay. <laughs> I mean, oat milk's a thing, right? Like it's not that weird. You can buy oat milk. So I can understand using oats as a dairy substitute. I get it. It makes sense. It's just not what I think of when I think of yummy beverage. <laughs> Woo, let's add some oats to that. <laughs> like, <clears throat> For this recipe, you will need a quarter of an ounce of oat flour, a quarter of an ounce of cocoa powder, and a sweetener of choice. Again, I just went for honey as I happen to have some in my cupboard and that is a historically appropriate choice. I think maple syrup would also be really good in this recipe though. Mix the cocoa powder and oat flour in a bowl with just enough cold water to form a thin batter. Pour over one cup of boiling water, stirring well to incorporate. Sweeten to taste with the honey or whatever sweetener you happen to be using. Okay, this has definitely cooled down because it's been it's been sitting here a while, but we'll we'll give it a try. I did try this when it was hot too, like right after I made it. I don't know what to say about this one. It's not bad. There's just something in it that makes my face want to pucker. And I suspect, because the other one didn't do this, I suspect it's probably the cocoa powder I used. I mean, chocolate unsweetened definitely has quite a bitter flavor, and I think it's the bitterness without any milk to balance it. 
it doesn't taste bitter. Like, like I did sweeten it and everything with the honey, but there's just sort of an after bitterness that tends to pucker my cheeks. But other than that slightly unpleasant sensation, <laughs> it's, it's not bad. Again, if you let this sit, you're definitely going to want to stir it because it has a tendency to settle. Mmm. Yum. I mean, I don't hate it. <laughs> I, if I was to make this again, what I would probably do, other than use milk, <laughs> would be to use a raw cacao powder. Those in my experience are a lot less bitter, and I think that would make this a lot more pal palatable than the the cocoa powder. But it gets kind of... <laughs> it gets slimy at the bottom. I don't even see that. It's really... You definitely want to serve any of these oat beverages with a spoon so you can stir as you go. <laughs> okay, so all this time... The oats for the mock coffee have been browning in the oven. This recipe says to take one or two of the cakes and place it in a pitcher. You're then supposed to pour an unknown quantity of cold water over top and let it sit for two hours. Once those two hours are up, it's time to strain, sweeten, and use. I'm assuming by use it means either chill to make cold coffee or heat up to have like as a hot beverage because I can't see room temperature mock coffee being in any way good. <laughs> okay, so this is my last one here. I made it in a French press so that instead of having to strain, I could just plunge. So maybe I should stir it a bit. Well, I wasn't getting a lot of color. I don't know if you can see it. It's really light. I'm wondering if I should have browned the oats a bit more. They were definitely brown on the outside of the cakes, but I feel like the inside of the cakes didn't get quite as toasted. So again, I would probably not make this. Uh, <laughs> If I were to try to make this again, I would probably brown the oats in an even layer rather than trying to form the cakes because I definitely feel like the ones in the center didn't didn't brown at all. And this is not looking like a coffee I would ever want to drink, but oh, oh, I just smelled it. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh, I didn't bring a glass. One second, let me, let me, let me get something to pour this into. <laughs> oh, maybe I can just use this. I'm too lazy to go downstairs and get a glass, but I got, I got a bowl. I'll, I'll drink it out of a bowl. Well, it, I don't think it's going to make any difference. Now, I didn't sweeten this because I don't normally sweeten coffee. I mean, it tastes like burnt oatmeal, is what it tastes like. I wouldn't say it tastes like coffee. <laughs> I know what coffee tastes like. This is not coffee. <laughs> I know what mock coffee tastes like, like made with chicory and dandelion. It's better than this. <laughs> this really just tastes like overcooked oatmeal. Overcooked oatmeal tea. Okay. <laughs> I'm going 
gonna need a minute. <laughs> well, that was that was interesting. I need I need something to get that taste in my mouth. Maybe I'll try the lemon slime again. Yeah, that's actually good. <laughs> so, moral of the story: don't make oat coffee. <laughs> I don't know if you took a lot of sugar in your coffee, if maybe you could make something somewhat palatable, but nobody's ever going to believe that's coffee. That is nothing like coffee. As I said, I have tried like fake coffees. I have dandelion and, and chicory mock coffees before. They are a lot better than oatmeal coffee. <laughs> I mean, I guess if that's all you have, pick some dandelions. I don't, I still wouldn't drink that. I'd rather have plain water. Plain hot water is a lot better than oatmeal water. Toasted oatmeal water. <clears throat> Anyways, so that's it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever tried any wartime recipes. I'm always looking for new ideas. I love wartime recipes because I have a lot of dietary restrictions and because they had a lot of food restrictions in terms of like rationing and what was actually available, they tend to nicely align with a lot of my, my dietary requirements. So I've made quite a few wartime recipes over the years. I made a really, really good carrot biscuit. I mean, actually, I remade those not that long ago. They're carrots, onions, and potatoes instead of any sort of flour. You kind of mash it all together and you bake it like a little biscuit in the oven. They are so good. <laughs> Anyways, as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you. Mix the cocoa powder and oat flour in a bowl with <laughs> Okay, uh I can't even look at that mock coffee. That was that was awful. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna need something after that coffee. <laughs> Maybe I can make a real coffee. Yeah. Yeah, it's only it's only 10.30 at night. That's not too late for an espresso, right? <laughs> right? <sighs> now my hat keeps slipping. I don't know where it's sort of like down on my forehead. Boop, boop. <laughs> now again, this recipe doesn't give any sort of measurements or any idea of how large these cakes should be. Like, are they supposed to be little? Or are they supposed to be big? I don't know. I took a guess. <laughs> Sue me. No, don't, please. I have no money. <laughs>